Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Here at Rock Wolf Black Country with the weekly comic book roundup. And we're going to get things started with the, fina the final week of War of the Realms Tides. Kicking things off, however, with a holdover from last week War Scrolls number three. Okay, so. Where we left off in, our primar in the primary story, God Without Fear, starring Daredevil. Um. Fisk had Wilson Fisk had betrayed Malekith and had actually turned and get in got some footage of himself fighting frost giants in New York, which will help for his re-election. And Malekith had lost track of Daredevil. And so he decided to take prisoner a few uh, well a few blind some blind kids. So we open up Asgard with uh, Heimdall and Daredevil training. Um, basically, Heimdall's training um, Daredevil to basically to focus, even though he's basically hearing everything. After which, he. Uh, He shows up in Germany, where Malekith is with with his prisoners, the Black Force, to be exact. Uh, turns out he took some uh, shards of the Rainbow Bridge to use against the uh, soldiers that Malekith would have with him. Curse and uh, which then. Puts it between Curse and Daredevil. Well, as they fight, Cur Daredevil says, reminds Curse of, of a name that, that uh, she'd forgotten. Her own name, Lady Wazaria. Or Wazaria, I mean. With this. And so, it's now Cur Daredevil versus Malekith. He does manage to get a cut on Malekith, but. And also free the prisoners. But the plan wasn't to defeat Malekith. The plan was to free the prisoners. However, the uh, the Bifrost picks up Daredevil and the blind kids and deposits them someplace nice and sunny. Back in Manhattan, um, during the final battle, Daredevil is going around killing frost giants, and he take, takes off one's foot. He tells, then tells, tells the giant to sit there and bleed. And he'll take the whole leg if he sees the giant upright again. Throughout the whole, th throughout the story, this portion of the story, Daredevil had been uh, narrating to himself about how. Uh, how God had, how he initially thought God had forsaken him, and by making him blind, and then now, of course, now have, being a God, he realizes he's just as God's just as blind as as Matt. And that's that, and that's where the story ends. Anyway, next up we've got a Rose for Victor, featuring Doctor Doom. So obviously this is there. Obviously this takes place in Latveria, the home of Doctor Doom. It's being narrated by one of Doom's subjects, and uh, there's a, a nod to issues uh, six through nine of the, the current Fantastic Four series. But. Uh, In the end, Doom ends up entering the battlefield. Taking down Dark Elves. Uh, 
and the pet, the uh, subject who narr- is narrating gives Dr. Doom a rose. Doom takes it and promptly, you know, says, say, Neil. But, uh, yeah. And finally, we've got a tale of Hulk and uh, Freya during their time in Svartalheim. Basically, it's the two of them. You've got a lot of uh, Jen Walters kind of being a little insecure about the fact that, oh, yeah, this is my boyfriend's mom. And I'm not really sure if she knows I'm her son's boyfriend. Her girlfriend. That. But she tells Freya what it's like being the Hulk. But they've gotten stuck in the swamp, and uh, so they're going on foot. And a creature swallows Blade and Punisher whole. After the two have had a brief uh, discussion about music. Punisher contends that uh, Cord and Spark is the greatest album of all time. Blade says that, that that's true in a world, but only in a world without bitches brew or lemonade. Personally, physical graffiti, man. That's the best. All of us want to be physical graffiti. But... And so, Jen hulks out, and her and Freya fight the swamp creature. And Hulk informs Freya that uh, Hulk and Thor are seeing each other. And also that Jen didn't say anything because Jen's kind of scared that, you know, Freya might not th- might think that Jen wasn't good enough. Freya asks what Hulk thinks, and Hulk says, Hulk knows Hulk's good enough. And it becomes clear that yes, Freya does approve. Freya approves of the relationship. And they go on, they move on to the Black Bifrost. And that much has been covered in the uh, in previous books, so yeah. Next up, we've got War of the Realms, The Punisher, number three. Concluding War of the Realms, The Punisher, miniseries. So, where we left off, Frank had been overpowered in the Lincoln Tunnel. And so, the uh, prisoner who's managed to take, take his gun basically demands a, a promise of safe passage. And so... Frank says that, all right, anybody still alive when we get to Jersey has earned their life back. So they continue to make their way through. Um, <laughs> Punisher makes a, a Molotov cocktail out of, a, out of an 18-wheeler, or out of a big rig at least. The, the truck portion, not the, yeah. It was, it's not an 18-wheeler because it's, there's no trailer attached. It's just, it's just the truck. And, uh, more of his penal squad get killed off, and uh, the explosion does manage to take up the enemy forces. And finally, they make it to Jersey, and the Fire demons and frost giants said, okay, you know what? Yeah. Let's go to the, let's go to this bridge. The, 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 let's go to this big old big bridge of the city of the north. And then we can hold that ingress point. So they get out. They're clear. The doctor thanks Frank. 
and the Sparrowy Prisoner for Aunt. And Frank goes on to explain that uh, early on, he, you know, he saw a monster crush a car and killed, you know, killing a wife and kid. And he swore to the the father, the husband, and fa husband slash father that he killed the monster, took everything from him. And so the last prisoner gets shot. The gets shot by Frank. However, and he get you know the. The the, uh, the doctor gives him what for about it. And Punisher's, you know, that, <laughs> he wasn't going to survive this anyway. The doctor's, you know, you know this, this guy helps us escape the war, though. Frank explains that the war never ends before going back towards New York. That's gonna uh, um, basically the story set up here can, has a brief portion in War of the Realms Omega and then goes into uh, Punisher Kill Crew starting next. Must be a miniseries running running for a few months starting next month. Next up, we've got New Ages of Atlas number four of four. So where we left off. Amadeus Cho is is uh, be in the clutches of uh, Cinder, and the rest of the agents of Atlas are working to uh, refreeze the polar ice caps that she's trying to melt. And we open in Cebu, and water levels are rising. Back at the North Pole, um, Wave, Luna Snow, and Arrow are doing what they can to, you know, well, Refreeze the the, pol the polar ice cap. Back in northern China, however, Cinder is flying on a dragon with uh, with Amadeus Cho in, in, in her clutches. And but the Agents of Atlas do manage to bring down the dragon. And. But uh, they they then dogpile Cinder. The rest of them, the rest of them show up: Swordmaster, Monkey King, Shang Chi, Crescent, no, Crescent and Io, White Fox. Yeah. And Pele. Only it's turns out it's not actually Pele. The great Tutu Pele sleeps in her sacred volcano. And. Turns out it's it's basically an LMD with a specialized condenser unit capable of draining and containing mystic energy, which is measured in hertz. By the way, I find that I find that very amusing. But the fight against Center continues and. Seemingly, the Monkey King is killed, but it looks it looks like the fight in uh, Cinder manages to, to escape, and uh, goes ends up in Beijing where she's fighting uh, where she ends up fighting. Captain Marvel and the Agents of Atlas who also show up to help out. Then afterwards, uh, Amadeus gives Jimmy Woo some grief for the fact that uh, he lied to them about Pele. And the team is basically Christened as the new uh, Agents of Atlas by Jimmy. Moving on to Thor number 14. So, um, 
Well, yeah. honestly, there's not much I'll say here. We begin many years ago in the weapons hall of Asgard. The teenage Thor is looking at all the various weapons and she's Molnir. Try he tries and tries to lift it, but he can't. And he does he Well, you know. He no longer cares if he can lift it or not. And to be perfectly honest, if he ever if he ever sees a hammer another hammer for the rest of his days, that would be just fine with him. But He's picked up by Reed Richards and uh, and the Thing, as well as the Goat Tooth Grinder. Turns out they had to go to the future, and he's brought to the pre he's brought to the present, the ruins of Asgard, alongside Thor, King Thor, and Thor. It, it built the Jane Foster Thor, the current Thor, and like I said, future Thor. And well, they're going to go rescue Freya and Odin from uh, Malekith. And the issue basically follows the battle between the two of them, which we also see in War of the Realms number six. Um. Malekith has turned the uh, symbiote into, into something that resembles uh, Gore the Bot God Butcher's Necrosword. Hey. Excuse me. But the fight continues. Um, all the various swords taking pot shots at Malekith. And, uh, the symbiote has gotten loose, however, and it goes after Freya, and is not trying to eat her, but, uh, Thor stops it. Light, this lightning. Turns out he's actually holding that he doesn't realize it, but he's holding Molnir. So he stops Venom. And he realizes the hammer's not heavy at all. It's li actually lighter than air. There was in fact uh, King Thor's Molnir, and he gives it back to King Thor. And King Thor is Gives him back the yarn board, the axe yarn board, and that's and like I said, the fight is also shown in War of the Realms number six. Moving on to Avengers number twenty. Um, once again, we focus on She-Hulk, and we start with uh, her therapy session, where she basically is. Dealing with the various Hulk aspects in her mind, as well as herself, Jennifer Walters. Uh, fast forward to now in Aust to Australia, and she's fighting. She's fighting Hulks. Uh, she's narrating about the fact that. Uh, You know her her past and her connection to the Hulk. Turns out, apparently, once upon a time, before okay, so before uh, Jen was like this as the Hulk, she was much more carefree, fun loving. She had she had the intelligence. She had the intelligence. She had the strength. Yeah, she had it all. She could walk down the street as the Hulk, and. People loved it. And she liked it too. And one time, Banner, Bruce, her cousin, told her he was jealous. So, after, uh,
We see a brief pep talk she gets from uh, from Captain Marvel, and see her beating the holy hell out of Ula, the unconquerable, presumably. Not the Ula that Deadpool talked into becoming a part of a show. Apparently, Ulla's been with her. <laughs> Ask her to marry him. Uh, and she then go. In Antarctica, we see uh, the agents of, At of Wakanda going up against uh, Roxxon's uh, super soldiers, and it seems like they are de delivering the cure for the, or they're unsuper soldiering them via. Well, biting them. And then, you know, Hulk shows up, beats the nice few of them around. In New York, when we really start talking about, uh, however, the time that Bruce told her that she was that he was jealous of her. Because when he, when, for most of the time that Hulk has existed, when he would Hulk, when Bruce Banner would Hulk out, well, no one wants to deal with, with him. Get away, stay away. And yeah, people, you know, people clear the streets for him. So she shows up in New York as Jen, talks to Daredevil a bit. Daredevil says some vaguely, vague and cryptic things to her. Explaining that the, the Celestials powered her up for a reason, for war. Not this war, or the wars yet to come. Through the Hell Race and the drawing of the Heralds, the Sea Trials and the Fury of Khonshu, the Red Rise of America's Mightiest Heroes. Through it all, your gamma rage will burn brighter, and you will know when it's time to explode, when you come to the war beyond winds, the war you've already lost. But, uh, yeah, she talks about some, you know, the downsides of being the not, you know, crazy Hulk. You know, the not, the not, the Hulk that isn't monstrous. Being hit, getting hit on during team-ups. Bad guys copying a feel during a fight. The guy who published topless photos of her when she was in the Fantastic Four. That really did happen in the comics. It's just that the editor saw it and thought that the that the uh, that the photographer had screwed up and that there was no way they could sell the, the pictures of, you know, you know, and somehow the, the pictures got screwed up and she was shown green. So, yeah. And all she goes on mission, no paparazzi ever followed Bruce around taking pictures of his butt while he was fighting the leader. And she told him that looking like a big scary monster didn't sound so bad to her sometimes. But uh we get a little uh no. I, I, I I like to think this is a nod to uh the first Avengers movie, but she informs Daredevil that uh, little se there's a little secret about Hulks. They're always at war. And the issue ends with her punching the shit out of a frost giant. Moving on to War of the Realms. Number six. So, first off, give you a look at the full cover. Alrighty. And so, War of the Realms number six, the conclusion. 
So we start off in the in the at the Sun Tree, where uh, it turns out that not only does Thor have to give up an eye, but also the last remaining shard of Mjolnir. And that's when he gets the idea to borrow a few Thors from the time stream. And so we see the fu first off the th hammer that uh, Lady th that Jane Foster's carrying is. Uh, War, the hammer of the War Thor. A lost relic of a dead universe. It's ultimate Thor's hammer. Yeah, so they, in New York, you've got, uh, well, all the heroes fighting off frost giants. And then, uh, then Captain Marvel shows up. Then, Defeating Cinder and carrying her own friggin' sword. So Lofe takes the uh, cast of Ancient Winters and swallows it. And basically starts belching out uh, Blizzard. So the battle continues in Stonehenge. The, there's the battle of Stonehenge, and yeah, we've been over that. Um, Daredevil, however, takes the uh, Sword of the Bifrost, throws it. And it lands in uh, in Lofi's mouth, and he swallows it. There's a storm brewing, a third gale from the sun. The Thors managed to defeat Malekith. And it turns out that Thor, from now, was rebuilding Mjolnir, reforging Mjolnir in the sun. And he is now, now and forevermore God of the Unworthy. And he beats the crap out of Thor, or out of Malekith. And so Jane Foster then throws the war, the uh, war Thor's hammer at her one last time, and takes a big old chunk out of uh, Lofe's face. But he he's not feeling too good, and then. Loki cuts his way out of Lofe's stomach with the the casket of, of Eternal Winters. Or, I don't know what that thing's called. Or ancient Winters. Back at Stonehenge, the Wild Hunt, having sensed the fear in uh, Malekith, No, they tear them apart. And the Venom symbiote kind of goes off. So I think it must get ready for the coming carnage. Um, the War Thor's hammer comes. The yeah, the War Thor's hammer comes back to. To Jane and explodes on her arm and uh, starts to wrap around, making a new ar armor. Loki because of King of the Frost Giants. Odin declares Thor, All Father Thor, Savior of the Realms. And himself a subject of Thor. And that is where it ends. For the most part, we've still got, apparently, War of the Realms Omega. Though War of the Realms Omega is going to be more of a jumping off point for the rest of, uh, for everything 
after War of the Realms. Anyway, that's it for this. For uh, that's it for War of the Realms. I mean, well, with the exception of War of the Realms Omega. Um, we still got the X Men this week as well. So, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I put new content. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal. We found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock setting off saying, live long and rock hard.